Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Something in Common. I am your host, Michael Wright. Across from me, as always, is my lovely, talented, beautiful, and now retired hot girl, sexy wife, Kimberly Nicole. Hey. How you doing, baby girl? I'm good. Blessed. That Blessed. We are, that we are. So, we know, before we even start. Where the hell y'all been? Where you been at? I've been in the damn hospital. Where you been at? <laughs> right next to your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got a lot to catch all up on. It's been quite an interesting um, month and a half, I guess. I guess. Um, mm, mm, mm. We were supposed to be doing an episode um, right a after few weeks back to let you guys know how St. Thomas was. So we're going to get into all of that. Um, but once we got back from St. Thomas... Somebody yeah. wasn't feeling well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, just put it like this. <laughs> it got really bad there for your boy there for a minute. But we're going to get into all of that. So where should we start? Do we start with? We should start with St. Thomas. Should we start with St. Thomas. Let them know how great it was. So you guys know we talked about it. We spent five days in St. Thomas and it was glorious. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. So if I know some of you guys hit us on, on Instagram and said you guys have been there, but for those of you who have not been there, mm. go. Go to St. Thomas. Check it out. It is beautiful. The weather was amazing. amazing. Um, you know, there was like they have these weird like rainstorms where it's the like rain for, like yeah like five minutes and then it's like boom it's gone and then it's like sunny and shit so it was uh, so calming so relaxing it, it yeah we went there and the Airbnb we stayed at didn't have any cable we didn't watch any TV while we were there at all none zero and. To be honest with you, it was. It was like a detox, was like a yes. purge. Yes, no news, no CNN, no BT, no ESPN, none of it. It was just us. Mm-hmm. And it was great. Mm-hmm. And then we lied to ourselves and said, oh, when we come home, we're going to take the TV out the room and all that shit. And we I ain't lie. I've been waiting on you to do it. <laughs> oh, so it's my fault now. So you don't be watching TV. Didn't you say you was you were putting it up in here? You were gonna be gaming and all that uh-huh. down? It, it, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But you haven't been watching TV in the room. I mean, it's in there. Anyway, so I guess let's let's start from the beginning. So we got to St. Thomas on a Tuesday. So my parents came with us, but we flew in the day before just so we can have a little alone time before my parents got there. We got into St. Thomas Tuesday afternoon, got to the Airbnb. Now, let me tell you about the Airbnb. The house was nice. I ain't going to lie. The area kind of freaked me out a little bit when we first got hmm. there. Um, let's just say. It was suspect for a second. We, we was amongst the people. And it didn't <laughs> help that GPS just does not work there. Like well, it took it a minute. There's to, no I don't know. street signs to help you if your yeah. GPS isn't working. There's no street, real street signs to be like, oh, take a left right here. You have to know the coordinates of where you're going. Yeah. So my GPS went. It was like, what the hell? Freaking haywire. This ain't Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the Airbnb, um, when I looked at it, the house was the house was cool. Um, and so when you go to Airbnb, if you've ever done Airbnb, you have um, you have regular hosts and then you have super hosts. So super hosts are people who have nothing but five star reviews. So this particular um, host had was a super host, had all five star reviews. All the reviews were great. Um, pull up to the place and uh, I'm trying to see what I can compare it to. Um it was the hood, but, and I, I you know what? I no, hate I saying that. Say it. It, no, I, I hate no, saying no, no. that. It was just amongst like it was the it working was class every, people. You know, it was our, it was neighbors. Yeah. So it was just, and it was because just, of the land and the environment, like 
all of the houses are like up on hills and they're very close together and windy roads and it's it, it, it's the environment. Yeah, so pull up, but the house was, I enjoyed the house a lot. It was really, really nice. Um, very quiet except for the goddamn roosters. Oh my God. Like, the roosters run the island. Roosters and chicken. There are more roosters and chicken than it is people on the mm. island. And talking to the locals, you ask them, like, do y'all eat these motherfuckers or what? <laughs> like, they don't mess with them. They don't I eat wouldn't them. either. They don't, they don't bother the chickens. They, they run the joint. They don't kill them. They don't do nothing. They are just running around here. And they and they start at 3 a.m. Yeah. just Because I was up with them. Cock-a-doodle doing all goddamn morning. Now, I sleep very hard. This one over here, she sleeps hard, but it, it don't take much to wake her up. So I roll over. Three, four o'clock in the morning. She just looking at all crazy because the goddamn roosters is going crazy. crazy. So between the roosters and the damn barking dogs. Oh, my. Lo- <laughs> Listen, I don't know what was happening with the dogs. I don't know if the roosters were aggravating them or that. De- I don't know. But it was a whole situation outside. And I heard every bit of it every day. Yeah, but the view from the house we are, because it was up on a hill, was beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I'm still going to put that. I took a bunch of pictures and videos. I'm still going to put that together and drop that on the YouTube page. Um, that was supposed to be done when we got back, but I'll get to why that didn't happen. But uh, I'll be putting all that together so you guys can see the house and see the view and all all the things that we were able to do. So the first night, um, all we did, we just came to the uh, checked in and got dressed. Wonderful dinner. Yeah. And I can't not think of the name of that place. Sunset Grill. Sunset Grill. So we went there. Food was absolutely amazing. And it was like right on the beach. So after we ate, we uh, just walked down these little stairs and they had like some uh, beach chairs out there. And we just sat and watch the tide come, watch the water come in. It was amazing. Like, and the sad part about it is, and I think I've told you guys this before, all the years me and Kim have been together, we've never really had a vacation, getaway. Not alone. No, yeah, it's like normally, you know, we do Family like vacations. summer vacations with the kids, but just us? Never. We didn't have a honeymoon? Nope. Everything that we have done has revolved around our children. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But two of them are gone. We sent the youngest one to go stay with them. That changes now. Yeah, so (laughs) it's like the the floodgates have opened. And I'll admit, part of it was my apprehension. I don't like leaving our children. I don't like them to be alone, even at their grown-up age. Taylor will be 20 in September. (laughs) It is sad. So between the kids and her being cheap, had I not put this trip together, we would not have gone. It's it's just, she does not like, now, take let, let me tell you about spending money. Now, if the kids need something, she'll spend it. It's my babies. But when it comes to us, it's like. We can wait. We're going to go broke. Like, are you talking about it? Are you crazy? So I took care of everything. Like He I, did good. I took care of everything because had I involved her in this process, we'd have still been sitting here. Mm. And we would not have a St. Thomas trip to tell you all about. So the next day, my parents get there. Um, we pick them up. No, that the next day before my parents got there, we went to Megan's Bay. Megan's Bay. I enjoyed that. Thoroughly. Yeah, it was a beautiful beach. Just sitting on the beach. They come put your chair up, put your umbrella up, and we just sat there. Your girl was in a string bikini. Mm. Yeah, you should have seen this one over here. Just check out the pictures on Instagram. Ass everywhere. Just (laughs) giving it to them left and right. And 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 can I say, she made quite the impression on the island men. Here we go. Did you or did you not? <laughs> Don't lie to the people. It was interesting. Yeah. And, and, and it, 
for me, when and again, I think I've told this story. When we first got together, like that shit used to irk me. I'm to the point now where it doesn't even you bother me. And now that I've lost all this weight, that's the weird part about it is before when I was 450 pounds, like dudes used to kind of like look and then they look at me and then they keep, they'll just, they won't look no more. Now my ass thing got little and they, I mean, they just look at her, look at me and like, oh nigga, I beat your ass and they just keep staring. I'm like, well shit, who, who am I? I guess I'm nobody now. I do not have the presence that I used to have. Oh, you was looking mighty fine on that beach and your cannot, wife. I cannot lie. I was feeling myself, mm -hmm. feeling myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> had the had the old ladies talking. Yeah, a couple a of lady little... talking about you look like you should be a model. It was an old white lady. Oh, no, you should model. Mm. No, she didn't say me. She said we. But look she like was looking models. at you down your throat. Man, hush it. Anyway, so. We hung out in Megan's Bay, and we went to pick my parents up. And um, from there, what did we do? It was just, it was, I don't know. For me, what I took away from that whole trip, the five days we were there, was just simple living. Yeah. It was like, you don't need much. The other highlights, Thursday was my birthday. We went snorkeling. We went out on a boat for the day yeah, that and did a snorkeling tour, which was so fun. We went it like was. island, like beach hopping, island hopping, kind of went to yeah, so we went three from, different areas. Yeah, we went from St. Thomas to St. John's. Mm -hmm. So St. John's has like a bunch of different little, little islands. Little, there. yeah, beaches. So we went to like, what, three or four of those? Mm-hmm. And did some snorkeling for the first time, which was very interesting. It was fun. It was fun, but that salt water. Mm. Take that, your throat out. Yeah, that shit get in that little snorkel <laughs> pipe and you get to swallowing that salt water. Like somebody he poured on salt, salt for yeah, three like, days. <laughs> shit, it was like somebody just poured a, a, a gallon of salt down your throat. It was That part was terrible. Mm -hmm. But trying things that I... Thought I'd never do before. The snorkeling was one of them. We actually had a great time that doing fun. that. Um, the, the boat was fun. It, they had like a light breakfast. Did some snorkeling. Open bar. The painkillers was flowing all day, which is their local drink. So, yeah, so good. Were, were they watered down? Because y'all didn't really get tipsy, I didn't think. I, I was trying to keep my composure. I was together. Yeah, my, my dad had like eight of them joints. And he was straight. <laughs> So uh, clearly they they were not super super strong. But they were good. I had good. there I think was I lunch. Had two of them, and I wasn't really feeling nothing. Y'all know I don't drink, so it don't take much to get me lit. And we had a nice lunch on the boat. Yep. Then we got back and showered and Went did dinner. dinner. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, so Kim spent her twenty seventh birthday. Oh, <laughs> too much. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, like I said, it was just the simple living. Like people there, they just enjoy. It was each island other. time. Nobody was looking at a clock. Like nope. it was whatever. We get there when we get there. So what else did we do? We did Megan's Bay. We went to St. John. We uh, took the ferry over to St. John's, which is more of a touristy type island. Yep. And they have a. Uh, old sugar plantation there mm. that we um, visited. That was very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there were a lot of slaves on St. Thomas and on St. John's. Mm -hmm. And um, we got to watch that. You guys will see that in the video. So I took a lot of videos and pictures of that uh, sugar plantation there. That was very interesting. Um, from there, we went back to St. Thomas because you don't want to get stuck over there. The ferries only run on a certain schedule. And they don't care if you get stuck. Yeah, it's so like at 5 o'clock, yeah, if your ass ain't on that ferry back to St. Thomas, you're going to be spending the night at St. John. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we had to be very careful of our timing over there. So we had lunch over at St. John's, and then by like 3 o'clock, we was headed back to the ferry to make sure we got back over to St. Thomas. Um what was the other beach we went to? Koki, was it Koki? Koki beach? beach. Yeah, we went now. Koki beach. That was beach. over at, um, yeah, that was. Koki beach was a whole nother experience from Megan's Bay. <sighs> Megan's Bay Ooh, was Lord. very like touristy, kind of chill, relaxed. Now Koki beach, on the other hand, that's they where the was lit. that's where the locals hang out. 
And when I tell you weed was And that's in the where your air. people from Baltimore and, and yeah. Atlanta come. Yeah, it was so many of oh, us over there. My Lord. And and check this out. The crazy part about Cokey Beach is so you pay the people, you you tell them you want two chairs and an umbrella. They bring you your chairs and an umbrella. The same people that set up your chairs and your umbrella will sell you weed and blunts. Yeah, I was like, excuse me? Uh, and everybody, I mean, the contact highs was for real. Yeah, they were. For they real. they were the the smoke was, was in real. the air, and it was thick. But I had one of the best drinks I've ever had in my life on that beach. Was it the smoothie? Yeah, that frozen one from Old Boy. Yeah, it was. Mm. A, it was a white dude making smoothies. <laughs> so I go over there and I check him out. And all his smoothies, like, so we had one from a, another bar. You know, they use like the, 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 canned, the, the, the canned stuff, but this dude was making all his stuff with fresh fruit, white dude. So we're just chopping it up and he's just like, you know, asking me where I'm from and told him where I'm from. And he was like, oh yeah, I'm originally from the islands and, uh, said he used to live in the States, but he said, I said, um, I said, well, you didn't like the States. And he was like, nope, it's too many white people in the States. Now, mind you, this is a white dude talking. <laughs> so he's telling me his whole story about how. At St. Thomas, you don't see a lot of like Black Lives Matter stuff. He was like, because we don't need it here. Everybody here gets along. There's no, um, not a lot of racial stuff going on out there. You know, I didn't notice any. I don't know how true that part of it and, was. And the government is majority black. Yeah. So, it, and that's so, where our sister, Miss Plaskett, Congresswoman, comes from. Yeah. Who was part of the impeachment hearings. She was an impeachment manager. She was amazing. That's that's her area. Yep. So he 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 was very interesting, but his drinks was off the fucking chain. Like amazing. The fruit out there. Oh, and that was the other thing. Like the the pineapples and the mangoes. Oh, so fresh. Like it it just shows you the shit that we got over here in the states. It was a hot mess. Yeah. That 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 stuff that's native over there was just. I we had a pineapple. And it was amazing. And I don't like coconut. Mm. Like had a real coconut. Now that coconut water shit you buy in the store. I hate it. Terrible. It's like vomit. But to go have a dude with a machete. (laughs) Chop, chop, chop the top off one of them coconuts. And stick a straw in that joint. Good. Some refreshing stuff. It it was amazing. I don't know what this shit they selling us over here. And them them, uh, them little bottles and the boxes. Yeah, but man. Y'all, I had... Smoked barbecue tofu. <laughs> you know your girl was in her heaven. It tasted so good. I don't know how they did it, what they did, but it was so good. So, so good. Yeah, you know, we we had already said, you know, we're going to, you know, kind of mess up our diet. We didn't do too bad over there, though. The food, um, you know, of course, it's a lot of seafood, but... The vegetables and the fruit was like pff, nothing I've ever had in my life. Yeah. So good. So we were we were so hooked on St. Thomas. We were talking about what would it cost to buy a house over here? I'm still hooked. Uh, um, you know, Kim's got some ideas of some stuff she wants to do, maybe like a retreat or something, a women's retreat or something Wellness, to do over there. Yes. Wellness retreat. Um, so yeah, definitely be on the lookout for that stuff. I hope she goes ahead and puts it together because I think that would be a good look. So we'll see. Don't be staring at me like that. Don't you look over here. I got this. Excuse the hell out of me. Anyway. It was great. It was amazing. I think the only stressful part of the trip was coming home. Like the airport at at St. Thomas is super small, like a matchbox. So super small. If you buy stuff, you got to go through customs. Like the line, you didn't know where one line started and one ended. I mean, the lines were massive. If you were trying to check a bag, you should have been there five hours that's, before your that's flight. That's the thing. If you go there, do not just check. pack light. Yes. Because if you check a bag, it's going to take you even longer to get through the airport. Thank God we did not check any bags. Getting there is fine. But of course, leaving, coming from their airport. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, the poor people that checked bags, they had to have been in line at least five hours. And there ain't no damn air. And it was hot as Hades up in that joint. We got there two hours before our flight. And we thought that was good. We thought that was early. So 
if you check bags, if you a heavy packer, um, yeah. five hours at it, least. I, and right. I am, we are not exaggerating. That no. line to check bags was outrageous. So we were in that line because we didn't know. And I guess they opened up another line for people that didn't have bags to check. Mm-hmm. And I'm ear hustling, listening to some worker there talk to somebody else. And I hear him say, you don't have any bags to check. Come with me. I was like, come on, y'all. Yep. And we follow him all the way through the airport right up to security. Yep. And even the security line was long as oh, shit. Yeah. So you got to take into consideration. You got to check your bag. Then you got to get into the security line. And like she said, if you buy stuff over there, you got to go through customs. Mm-hmm. That's going to take you even longer. So mm-hmm. just take that in mind. <laughs> Please be mindful and of that. You can you buy go. like little stuff. Like we bought like little bracelets for the girls, but yeah. those fit in our bags. It wasn't anything, um, you know, they had to weigh and look through and all of that. Like it's crazy. And they don't have, so in our airports here in the States, you have people when you, you can check your bag at the curb when you pull mm-hmm. up to an airport and they take the bag and load. They don't have those people there. So you're literally loading your own bag onto the belt that then goes to the plane. So instead of having those people do that, that's why the lines are so long because people are doing it for themselves. It was, te- it was terrible. Yeah. Oh, it was hot as fucking. Oh man. my God. It was so hot. Then you finally get through security. You got to show your ID a few times. Mm-hmm. You finally get through security Get to where you're waiting for your plane and don't none of the plugs work. You can't get no juice. So if you don't have charged devices, <laughs> you show. Because yeah. don't nothing work. It was quite the interesting process getting home. Um, and they are walk-up planes. So the planes, like you don't board from the airport. You have to walk outside Go up the steps onto the plane. Yeah, so, so it's they like roll the steps up planes. to the yeah. plane and you got to walk up it. Regardless of all of that. It was still amazing. We didn't want to go home. Mm-mm. Like those five days when I tell you they flew by, they flew by. It was great. We are definitely going back. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Have we even talked? What, what is our, Where are we going next though? Our anniversary will be in October. Where are we going in October? I don't know. We're, so listen, so we're supposed to be doing a show, a fitness competition in November in, November in Miami. I've uh, One of these years we're going to Greece because I just have to see that blue water. Like <laughs> the, the white homes and the blue water just is amazing to me. So I need to see that. Um, definitely Hawaii. Haven't uh, never been there. So who knows where we might end up? We got plenty of time to plan it out. So that leads us into why the hell we haven't recorded in quite a while. So we get home. Everything is good. We decide we're going to get back on our workout now. Okay. So we yeah, because that weekend we had the fitness competition workshop that first weekend back. Yep. So we had the fitness competition. It was like a kind of like a zoom thing, right? Yep. It was a workshop. Um, so Michael and I w- w- want to do a fitness competition, uh, with the WBFF Federation. They have a transformation category and we want to, we're going to be God willing in the transformation category, the shows in Miami in November. So when we got back the first weekend back, we had this zoom call with folks from WBFF. It was a whole workshop, all that getting prepared for the event. Now, this was on a Saturday. Now, that Friday, we get back on our routine of working out. So, we work out. We get up Friday morning, 5 a.m., we're at the gym. Do our workout, come home. She goes to work. I do whatever little stuff I had to do. And then about 9, 30, 10 a.m., I'm feeling good. I'm like, I'm refreshed. I go out in the garage, say, I'm going to do a second workout. It was arm day. So doing arms, feeling good, get to the end of my workout, trying to cap it off with some preacher curls. Do my curls, and I was going heavy that day. So I'm lifting heavy. I get off the preacher curl bench in the garage, and I stand up, and I got like this sharp pain like right in the lower part of my chest and down into my abdominal area. I'm thinking maybe I pulled a muscle or something. So like it's hard for me to catch my breath, and I just got this throbbing pain in my midsection. Go in the house, sit on the couch, and then just I can't get comfortable. Everything is every like 
It's just hurting really bad. So I go upstairs, lay in the bed. Um, next thing I know, I just started having these like episodes where I'm just vomiting, it's just like violent vomiting. I'm just hugging the toilet. Didn't know what the hell is going on. Um, I think I text, text you. me. I get a text. Text says, babe, I need you. I'm like, what? So I text back, what's going on? He's like, I'm not feeling good. I just threw up. I'm like, wait, what the hell? So I call. And I'm like, what's going on? And you're telling me I, I did a second workout that I'm like, oh, hell. Listen, and you know, I go into my mode. Your ass ain't 18 no more. Why the hell are you doing a second workout? I've done two workouts a day. Heavy a workouts. And I was like, do you need to go to a patient first? And you're like, no, you know, I feel okay. I, I'm just going to see what happens. So the next day, that's when we had the workshop. And I was feeling okay. Still had a little discomfort in my midsection. But again, I'm still thinking maybe I just strained a muscle or something like that. That's what like we that. thought. Yeah. So we do the workshop. We leave the house, go shopping, all of that stuff. Come home. I'm thinking I'm straight. The next now Sunday I wake up. I still got a little discomfort in my midsection, but I'm feeling okay. So I knew I had to go to work the next day. So I'm thinking, let me just run over the patient first just to make sure, you know, everything is cool. I was at the pool Sunday morning and I text him that I'm finished. And he says, I think, I think I'm just going to go over the patient first to be checked out. So I'm like, I'm on my way home. Like I'm on my way. He's like, no, you know, I can just go. I was like, no, I'm on my way. So I get here. I'm flying up into the driveway, rushing in here. I'm ready. Let's go. What's happening? He like, I'm coming in the shower. So seemed like he was fine, but just wanted to get checked out. So we get the patient first. It's Here's crowded. A, the, yeah. the parking lot's packed. So I'm like, okay, it's going to be a minute. So I check in. She runs. It's like a target right there in the same like area of the patient first. I check in. She runs over to Target. Check in. Meet with the, the nurse. Did my insurance, all that stuff. And she said, they'll call you in a few minutes. So I'm sitting down in the lobby. And it had it wasn't even 15 minutes. Yeah. So a few minutes after I sit down, after getting checked in, I start getting chills. Like I get really cold, but I'm starting to sweat like profusely. So by this, I, I, I'm texting her and I'm just like, he said, are you back? I didn't even see it because I was walking in. Yeah, so I see her walking in the door, and by this time, I'm slumping out of the chair. So I'm like, you're like, you, he looked at me and said, I think I need to go to the emergency room. And I'm like, wait, what's going on? All of a sudden, he slumps down, eyes roll back. He's sweating puddles. I mean, his clothes are drenched. I run to the back of patient first. I'm like, I need a nurse, doctor. I need y'all out here. My husband is unresponsive. He's sweating. They come out with, an, with a wheelchair, get him in the wheelchair, and get him to the back immediately take his shirt off, getting him all hooked up to blood pressure cuffs, um, EKG. EKG machine. And he's talking. I mean, he knows where he is. He's answering questions. Nothing comes up on the EKG. Blood pressure is normal. And the physician assistant's like, I don't like this. I'm going to call the ambulance. Call the ambulance. They load me up. Take me to the hospital. Get to the to hospital. our local hospital that's like 10 minutes from our house. Get to the hospital. They come in. They're just like, hey, what's going on? So I'm telling them all the symptoms that I'm having. And, and I don't know what's going on back there because we're in a pandemic and I can't yeah. go back there. So I I am pull up to the to the emergency and I go in and the, all, the lady's like, can you register him? So I give him all his information and she and I said, can I wait here? And she's like, no, you have to wait in the car. <laughs> so I'm in the back. And this guy comes in, nurse, and I'm telling him, he was like, you know, what's going on? So I'm telling him everything that I'm dealing with. And luckily, he knew his shit. So as I'm telling him what I'm feeling and, you know, where the discomfort is, he was like, we got to get you in for a CAT scan ASAP. And he called it, like, before they even did the CAT scan. He was just like, I think you might have, you know, something going on with your aorta. Get the CAT scan. Mind you, I have his cell phone. So I can't, I don't know what is mm. happening. I'm outside. Now, this is taking a few, like, hours. Yeah. I worked out that morning. I was starving. So I was like, okay, there was a Starbucks less than a mile. I'm just going to run and grab a sandwich, came back. And I'm just sitting in the parking lot just waiting so to hear something. They do the CAT scan. And I hadn't even been back in the room five minutes after the CAT scan. Dude runs back in. He was just like, I was right. Like, you have a tear in your aorta. 
and he was like, it's major. Like they're like the whole, like the nurses are freaking out and they're just like, we're going to airlift you to university of Maryland. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So they call me now, mind you, like I had the episode of patient first, but by the time I got out of the ambulance and in the, into the hospital, I'm feeling okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm feeling better. The CAT scan says you have a tear in your aorta. Like some, like we got to like, they're making it seem like I'm going into emergency surgery as soon as I get to University of Maryland. So by this time, there was a phone. They called me. Yeah, they called her. The doctor called me and says, "Miss Nelson Wright, this is serious. Your husband has an aortic dissection. We're airlifting him to University of Maryland for emergency surgery. I'm like, what in all the hell? What? So I'm in the car. I'm like shocked. Tears are rolling. I call a friend of mine um, who's actually my boss at work, who's a doctor. Um, she knew what was happening from, from patient first. So I call her to tell her what's going on, and she's like, okay, they're doing the right thing, getting him over to Maryland, not trying to do anything at the local hospital because they weren't equipped to handle mm -hmm. this situation. So she's like, me and my husband will come and get you, leave your car, we'll take it. And I'm like, no, I can, I can do it. I can drive to Maryland. Well, by this time, they, they, they called me and they, yeah, back. they said, look, the, and this is what the doctor said to me. He said, we don't allow this, but we're going to allow you to come back and see him because we don't know if he'll make it to Maryland. And I'm like, what? So I go in, I've got his phone. I'm like trying to keep myself together because when I walk in, he's like laying there, like fine. So I come in and I just start bawling and he's like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And I just could, I, all I could do was hug him because I just didn't know what was happening. And if you guys follow us, you know, five months ago, I lost my dad. So I was just beside myself and there was very poor service in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I had to FaceTime his mom. Couldn't call cause it wouldn't go through FaceTime his mom to tell her, trying to keep it together, um, like to FaceTime all our girls, all four, trying to tell them what's going on. It was pandemonium. The flight team comes in, they're getting him prepped, and I I'm still could not believe this was all happening in a matter of minutes. Yep. So he was well enough. I gave him his cell phone so he could communicate with me because I knew I, I didn't know how when I was going to see him again. You know, our area hospitals are not allowing people in. So they load me up. You know, he gets there, gets it gets I, I'm getting in the car in full, full tears. I look down at and I I I see them take off from the roof. And I look down at my phone that's going off, and this man is texting a picture. To our family text with the girls saying, hey, guys, I'm in a helicopter. <laughs> Just trying to keep them while out. I'm uh, sobbing, <laughs> trying to get on the highway down the parkway to the University of Maryland. So they get me there. Um, they literally got him there in 10 minutes in the helicopter. Yeah, they get me there. They land. Um, get me to the room. And from there. I guess when I got to the hospital, my blood pressure just shot up. So my blood pressure was like 140 over 90 or something like that. Um, this is where it starts getting weird because it was not a lot of communication like the first couple of days I was there. I didn't know what the fuck was going so on. So I sat at front in my car in front of the emergency room at University of Maryland for hours. I had talked to my mom and my sister on the road to, to the hospital. They get there a few minutes after me and they, they're parked in the garage. They're like, where are you? I'm like, I'm sitting in front of the emergency room and they come and get in the car with me. And I just collapsed in my mother's arms, like crying, 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 crying. Like, and I'm just like, God, please, like, please, please don't take him. Like I can't. And it was just full on tears for at least an hour I'm waiting to hear something like now, nobody you, knew. Nobody could tell me anything before we even got in the helicopter. They're like, you're, you're going to have to go into emergency yeah. surgery. I get to the hospital. They take me up to the cardiac ICU. Mm -hmm. I think that was, and I'm just laying there like mm -hmm. nobody's saying shit. So I'm like, what, 
what the fuck is going on? So they're just like, well, we got to get your blood. So they're, they're working on my blood pressure, but there's no surgeons coming in, no nothing. They call me and tell me that yep. he's there. He's They're trying to admit him, but of course I can't come in. They said I could come once he gets in a room. We didn't know when that was going to happen. Um, I had already been out there like two hours. They were like, go home because we don't even know what time we're going to get him in the room. And visiting hours end at eight. But because he doesn't have a room, you can't come in. So my mom finally talks me into going home. I talked to Michael before I left and he was like, go home. Like you, there's nothing you can do here. But my thought was, what if they need me? What if they say, you got to come in here because we don't know or, or something's happening. I can't leave. Even though we're about 25 minutes from University of Maryland. I was like, I, I can't. Finally, my mother talked me into leaving. My, our youngest daughter was home. So I came home. I talked to the kids, let them know what was going on. And I, I like literally at 730 that Michael called me and was like, I'm they're moving me. Mm. And I was like, of course, right when visiting hours are over, <laughs> of course. So they get him into a room, get him all hooked up to all of these. They had to put an A line in so that they could check his blood pressure more accurately they had to put all these lines in. He's on heart monitors and it's just a lot. So the next morning, still, we don't know. Yeah. We're thinking this is like emergency surgery, but we don't know. All we hear is we've got to get his blood pressure under control. Like that is the main thing we got to do right now. So they made it sound like if we do this and the blood pressure is not under control, this could be life threatening if we try to go in and blood pressure is too high. Now, mind you, before all of this happened, my blood pressure was fine. So talking to one of the nurses, she was just like, you might have what they call white coat syndrome. And I'm like, what the hell is white coat syndrome? It's like basically you get your body kind of goes out of whack once you get into a hospital and you get around nurses and all of that shit. And I'm starting to think that might be true because mind you, my blood pressure was fine. Now, I do have high blood pressure and I do take medication for it, but... I've been taking my medication when they, but took when we say fine though, because what we've noticed is when it's, when it's nearing time for your medicine, you might be in the one thirties and typically that's fine for the average person, not for Michael. Michael has to be less than that because it, he can't, his body can't handle being that high. It needs to be one twenty or less. For him and his condition. So, like, I think I'm in there two days before the yeah. surgeons come in. And you know I am. Yeah, she she ready, she ready I'm, to act the damn fool. I done me. got patient yeah, advocacy, charge nurses. Like, I'm pissed. I need to know what's going on. So, anyway, the surgeon finally comes in, I think, day three. Because we we were not that we weren't speaking with doctors, we were speaking to the ICU doctors. Mm -hmm. They're not who we needed to talk to. Yeah, we I need to, to know who dealing with the heart issue. So they finally come in, and they're drawn all on the board, trying to draw my order. And so there's two type of dissections: you have an ascending dissection and a descending dissection. What I have is a descending dissection which means basically it's like the tear and the blood is going down now had i had an ascending dissection it would have been emergency yeah, surgery it, that means it's going up to the heart and there, that yeah, that's that, that would have been really bad so. and the, but so what we didn't know was that at our local hospital they called this in as an ascending dissection that's why he was airlifted and all this commotion mm -hmm. come to find out once maryland got the pictures they knew that it wasn't an ascending. However, nobody told us. Exactly. <laughs> Until my ass had been in the hospital three days. And I had to be Kimberly <laughs> Nelson, right? So they're giving me the breakdown as far as what's going to happen next. And they were just like, okay, well, we could possibly go in and um, basically they have to go through your groin and then they can put like some type of graph over it. But they're just like, well, we can't do that with you. Because you have a funnel shaped aorta. And I'm like, well, what the hell does that mean? He starts drawing on the board, basically saying my aorta is shaped weird and they can't put a um a stent. A stent in it. So there's two companies in the country that make stents and 
they don't make a stent that's shaped the way he needs it. Yeah. So then basically he's telling them, so what's going to have to happen is we're going to basically have to crack your chest open in the middle, go in, then put a graph over the the dissection and then and that'll fix it. So basically I was going to be having open heart surgery. Um, of course, I'm freaked the hell out because I'm like, I'm not trying to get my chest split open. Um, so from there, I spend another 10 days in the hospital just get my blood pressure monitored. They got me on so many damn pills. And IV, IV blood pressure yeah. medicine. So <clears throat> literally, then I, you know, they luckily, well, I, I don't know if I would have got hooked up with him anyway, but, you know, like my wife said, she, um, her boss is a doctor and she, she knows a couple of specialists. So they got me hooked up with um, um, a hypertension specialist and he prescribed some stuff and, um, by day five, I'm I'm ready to break out of this bitch. Like I'm done. Like, His ass is telling me I can discharge myself. And I was going like it, it. It wasn't even just being in the hospital. It was like all the damn a lines. Like they're literally putting lines into my um into the like my, the arteries in my arm, and that shit hurts. And then they put them in, and like two days later, the thing starts going bonkers. Then my damn right arm swells up. Um, he ended up with two blood clots. Yeah. And then they had to go over to my left arm, got two more over there because they, they, I don't know. These he things was just irritated. aren't, yeah, I was pissed off. I don't like needles. And then like they were telling him, on. you know, your life is going to change. No more heavy lifting. That really set him off. He was pissed off about that. Um, he was just irritated. He couldn't get comfortable to sleep. I'm a stomach sleeper. I can't sleep on my back. Like, my, just, and I've they were in had. there. The first few days, they were in there every hour. Yeah, and then you can't sleep. And that was the other thing. I was just they're, they're just ch- constantly checking. And I get it. And the goal was to keep his blood pressure at first under 140. And then it got tight, and they wanted to keep it under 120. So every time it went off, of course, bells and whistles going off, notifying the nurse. She's coming in. They're adjusting the medicine. They're titrating and all this, trying to get the right mix of medications to keep his blood pressure under 120. All the while, we're still in a pandemic, and you're not allowed to spend the night anymore in the hospital with your loved one. So literally, visiting hours were 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I was there every day, 8 a.m., 8 8 p.m., and it was a lot. I'm trying to keep him calm, trying to keep him positive. You know, literally all the nurses in Texas had to do was come in and take his medica- do his medication because I made sure he got clean. I He hated the food, so he <laughs> we had to make sure he had food that he could eat that he liked. So I was running around getting food. That hospital food is terrible. <laughs> and then for what, and, and like, side note, when you get those hospital bills, they charge you for every fucking mm-hmm. thing. They shouldn't charge you for that bullshit ass food. <laughs> like, that shit was, it was garbage terrible man and 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 i knew like i would take the top off the plate and be ready to vomit because it <laughs> one day they had beef something and it looked like dog, dog food. food it smelled awful the only thing Ugh. i could kind of halfway eat was like that whack-ass french toast they would bring me in the yeah. morning and i had to drown that shit in syrup it was mm-hmm. just like i yeah. uh, it was terrible and there's no effort whatsoever put into hospital and food. sadly which is my pet peeve, you know, being on this health and wellness journey. You know, they, they say that the food was heart healthy. Mm. <laughs> that was some bull. I was like, you're not eating that. I'm going to get you something with some real greens. Like, you're not eating that. Yeah, so that all of that shit between the not being able to sleep, the food, Getting poked and prodded on every damn day. He told day. me he was checking himself out. Oh, I was 38 hot. I was ready to go. Like, them motherfuckers was like, ah, oh, nah. And, nah, and then, just, mind you, I can't, like, had this been no, a normal issue, I would have been all over him. No, your ass is going to stay right here. Da, 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 da. But you got to keep him calm. You can't fuss at him. Mm-hmm. You can't get his blood pressure up. So I'm just like, Michael, they have to do this. These lines don't last forever. Well, she Your did body it. moved. Then she went and snitched on me to my mama. So. Yes. Because I couldn't do nothing else. Like, I wanted to let him have it. And I couldn't. So I text his mother. Snitches, boy, I tell you. So. And he got his life together. Yeah, whatever. 
Anyway, we get to like day 10, I think. They relax. And then they're, yeah, they're like kind of the visiting winging. hours so I could stay the night. But they're starting to kind of wing me off mm-hmm. the IV drip. That yeah. was the whole goal was to kind of wing me off the IV medication. So they're winging me off of that. And thank uh, goodness for the specialist because yeah. the, the, the combination of medications that he prescribed once he finally got involved worked. Yeah, so they're finally winging me off of that. Now, mind you, the 30th rolls around and I'm because I go into the hospital on the 23rd, mm-hmm, I believe that mm-hmm. was my birthday was the 30th. So I spent my damn 43rd <laughs> birthday in the damn. They hospital. gave him a birthday party. I will say the nurses was dope. They came through. They hooked. You up it was the nurses, the techs. It was the secretary, the floor secretary, like everybody. Now, they loved your boy up in there, though. They love me up in there. And honestly, I think the only reason they liked me so much is because I was still, to, like, I was like, shit. yeah, I was like self-sufficient. So most people, you know, where I was have, you know, they've had open heart surgery. You know, they can't do anything for themselves at that particular moment. Some are non-community. Like it was, yeah. it was definitely a trigger for me to be in there. Like having to leave his room to like go get stuff for him and pass in the rooms. I passed the room with a. Uh, older gentleman on a vent and his son was just sitting next to him holding his hand just crying like pop please talk to me pop please and i lost it yeah. i was gone i was gone for like a couple hours michael <laughs> was like where you at i text him like i'll be back yeah. i was on the phone with my mother i was talking to my friend like i was in full tears i could not handle it yeah so it was like i was pretty self-sufficient so i was like you know i could get up and i could do whatever they but- kept asking do you need anything do you need me like no Nah. They're like, are you sure? Can we do anything for you? You know, you know, and then she and then Kim was there. So when it was like they had to bathe me, if she would do that, they didn't have to really do anything for me except, <laughs> you know, coming in and make sure my IV was still good or whatever. Um, So finally, they're telling me like, OK, you know, we could possibly um, we're not going to do this. So they didn't want to do the surgery because they want to kind of monitor me and, you know, kind of give it some time to heal. So basically the surgeon's like, look, if we go in now and do it, it's too risky. It's too risky. You know, it, you know, the, the, the dissection is still fresh. If we go in now, it's a possibility. You may not get up off the table. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, well, okay then. <laughs> so they decided shit. to, instead of surgical, surgical intervention, medical management, which is, Lots the, the, of medication. Yeah, so they got me. They were just like, but you got to keep your blood pressure low. So they got me on all these meds to keep my blood pressure straight. Um, finally, day 13 rolls around. Um, I get discharged. I'm happy as hell. But all the medications they got me on, like all the side effects to everything that I'm on is like dizziness, lightheadedness, nauseous. Mm-hmm. So I would take these pills and literally... The moment I stood up, like, it literally felt like I was going to faint and just fall out. Because it, it was dropping my blood pressure so low, yeah. like, to the point it was like my, sometimes my blood pressure would be like 90 over 60. It was just like, it was crazy. And my body hadn't adjusted to all of this stuff yet. So as long as I was sitting down or laying down, I was good. It was hard to take a shower. It was hard to go into the bath. Like, literally, I had to have Kim put a chair in the bathroom just so I could sit down and brush my teeth. It was like. Shit was crazy. And 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 just so you guys could get how sensitive this still is, like, and this might be TMI, but just so people understand, like, if he goes to the bathroom, he can't bear down. You know, if you got to go to the bathroom and sometimes you got to uh, strain, he can't. Because if he does, he, that could cause an aneurysm. He can't stress my damn business. at all. No stress, no strain. And one other wrinkle that we didn't say in the hospital. So he had the two blood clots in his arm, but also had kidney damage. So when you take the contrast to Gosh, have a damn. CT scan, you got to take that stuff by mouth, you know, so they can see it kind of lights everything up for him when they do the scan. So when he had his initial scan and took the contrast, the contrast damaged the kidney. So, we're way every day. It's like Marilyn says, we're going to do another CT scan because we need our own imaging. But every time they take his creatinine level, a blood draw, it's super high. So that says your kidneys are damaged. So they were saying the kidneys were damaged from the, from the contrast he had to drink. So each day the CT scan got pushed back because they were trying to let the kidneys heal every day, taking the creatinine levels. So it, it would go down a little bit. 
Um, it got to the point where they were just like, well, we think he might live at this number <laughs> that it's been settled at for the last two days. So we're going to go ahead and do the scan. But it was critical that they did their own scan so they would know what they were looking at. You know, they were just really going off the scan that they got from our local hospital. But the kidneys were also damaged. So he's got this aortic dissection. He's got kidney damage. He's got two blood clots. Like, <laughs> So they finally do their CAT scan, and luckily, um, everything was stable. The the dissection hadn't got any worse, which was a good thing. Um, the aorta hadn't grown or gotten any bigger. Yeah. So <sighs> they, you know, finally like, okay, we got your blood pressure under control. We're going to let you go home. So I go home. But, like, the first week, I'm just trying to get accustomed to this medication that I'm on. It's a lot of shit. When I tell y'all, it's a lot of damn pills. So, and you know, days go by, get a little better. Finally, I had to go back and get another CAT scan. <laughs> well, you had to see the specialist first. Yeah, saw the specialist on a Tuesday. He kind of adjusted one of the meds to help with the dizziness a little bit. Yeah, because when I got to his office, they checked me in, and the gr- <laughs> his nurse is doing my blood pressure. My blood pressure is 90 over 60, and she's just like, are you okay? I was like, not really. I'm feeling like I'm about to fall the hell out. And she was just like, well... Yeah, because your blood pressure is super low. So they took me off one of the... I was taking one of these pills like, what, three times a day? Two pills, It was two, two times, pills, three, three times, times a day. day. And it was like excessive dizziness. So he thought that if he took it down to one pill three times a day, would that help? And it seems to... Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely getting be. better. Um, so we did that this past Tuesday. Um, Wednesday went in for the CAT scan. Thursday had to come back and meet with the surgeon. Um, so he was very optimistic. So now mind you, this is the partner. Yeah. The, it's like of the original of surgeon that we saw. Yeah, we so saw one surgeon them. in the hospital and then we saw his partner at the follow up. So it's a team of them. We meet the other guy Thursday and he's just like, um, you know, kind of going through my story and he's just like, okay, so everything is still stable. It hasn't gotten any worse. Um, blood pressure is good. So, now, mind you, this whole time, they basically what they're telling me is, like, no surgery right now. You know, it could be six months from now. It could be a year from now. It could be two years from now. Hell, it could be five years from now. But eventually, you're going to have to get this fixed. It just depends on, you know, how the A order holds up. And they're going to have to crack my chest open. So, talking to this surgeon, he's just like, no, we can go in and do the stent, you know, but, you know, we still got to, we still got to monitor you for a while. And like I said, once it gets to a certain point, then they'll have to go in and do the surgery. So he made it very clear that once I do have to get something done to fix it, they won't have to crack my chest open, which made me feel a lot better. And he said that, you know, it's going to heal. So uh, it just Somewhere. depends on how much it heals, but it will heal to an extent, but it's still ex- extensive and still will need a surgical intervention. But from talking to him, it sounds like while it's still a surgical intervention, it may be less invasive. Yeah, so it'll be there. He said, no, we can we can do the stent. So it's just I don't know how it works totally, but it's like a, an incision through your groin. And I guess they kind of go up. Yeah, the they just aorta. put the graph on it and stick it and then go right up through and just yeah. cover it up. So it's not like it's, a band aid, yeah, a permanent like, band aid. Yeah, it's like less invasive than having your chest ripped open. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so from there, it's just you know going forward is keeping the stress level low, keeping the blood pressure in check. Um, you know, taking my uh, taking my meds. You know, and the big thing for me was no dropping, stress. yeah, dropping all this weight. I had really got seriously into the weightlifting. And he was just like, "No, you can still weightlift. You just can't do any heavy lifting." So now I got to kind of rework my whole workout plan and and just do light weights. So you know, be doing light light weight, more reps. Um, you know, which will be something that I have to get used to. But like I told him, I said, you know, heavy weightlifting ain't worth straining something to dying over. So. I'll be more than happy to flip that around, but at least I won't totally lose the weightlifting aspect of it. So, and he can you know, always do cardio as much as Jesus he'd Christ, like. Jesus Christ, lady, I know, I know, I know. I will be doing cardio as well for so, his heart health. But he did say my heart is healthy, ma'am. Your aorta ain't. 
but my heart is, is is straight. I got a good strong heart. He said. Yeah. Anyway, but he you know, will be in the Peloton room with me. So get ready to see him on the leaderboard. But the good thing is, like he said, you know, we want you to do live your normal life, you know. Um. But yeah, you know, keeping the stress level down, um, keeping the blood pressure in check. It, so it, it, there are definitely adjustments that I'm going to have to make to make sure that this situation doesn't get any worse. So I feel good. Stress is the big. Yeah, kicker. I mean, I feel good, but you know, I'm not out of the woods yet completely. Mm-hmm. Not out of so it's still you know. I still look at him all the time. I still watch him as he sleeps. I still ask him all the time if he's feeling okay, if he needs anything. I still text. Mm -hmm. Uh, Last week I went to work two days until two, but I was home most of the time. And I am his um, inner voice. I am his alarm clock. I am his observer. I am his caretaker. I am his love. That you are, sweetie. (laughs) No, but... You know, she, she's been great. Like I said, the whole 13 days I was in there, she was there every day. She bathed me. She took care of me. We got home. She organized all my damn pills. Like it, it's, it was good not to have to go through this alone. Cause I don't know how I would handle this shit. This man goes to a doctor's appointment with a specialist, not near pen, not near notebook, not Saw documentation nothing. that he yeah. got from the hospital nothing all he just in, shows up all in this joint. that's why yeah. i have to be there because i had all his paperwork from the hospital i had all his prescription information i was taking notes i was asking questions while he sat there it's all up in the dome I'm like a mental recorder up the here. doctor is looking at me we talking like he not even there that's He's asking me bullshit. medication questions. So is he taking this? I'm looking at my notes. I want to compare with what you have. Want to make sure we all the same. And he's just sitting there. It made her feel special. So I let her handle all of that. But I had it all up in here though. I had it. Anyway. This is the same man that didn't. I, te- I asked him, what are your appointments? So I can confirm and bl- make sure I block my calendar at work. Got them all wrong. I didn't get them all wrong. I just had the one Thursday. I had it mixed up with Friday. That's it. Don't, don't, don't do me. Don't do me. What would he do without me, y'all? Anywho. So that's where we are with that. And, and in all seriousness, I want to give a special shout out to all of you guys who reached out to me. So Kim was kind of keeping everybody updated on Facebook and Instagram. And man, it was so many messages and comments. Um, from you guys out there. And I appreciate the hell out of that. Like seriously to go, you know, to be sitting in the hospital, not knowing whether you're going to live or die and seeing so much, um, support and love and comments and all of that stuff, man. I just want to say all of y'all who did that, y'all are super dope. I appreciate all of it tremendously. Like it, that really made, you know, a little, made my stay there a little bit easier knowing that it was so many people out there, you know, that, cared about my well being. So, you know, in all seriousness, all seriousness, thank you guys so much for that. Like it didn't go unnoticed. I tried to comment back to everybody that I could. If I missed anybody, I apologize. But man, y'all, y'all really made your boy feel good and kept me upbeat and kept me positive. Um so, you know, going forward, you know, and that's the other thing, just keeping a positive mindset. Like I said, meeting with the surgeon on Thursday and every all the information he gave me really made me feel better about the situation know that I'm going to be okay going forward. So thank you guys again for that. I, I, I don't even know what else to say, but thank you. Like I really felt that and I appreciated the hell out of it. Um, but from here, it's just back to business, you know, um, I'm gonna keep listening to your more. wife. Yes. And listening to my wife. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, it's going to be business as usual. It's going to keep it moving. Um, keep doing these shows, keeping you guys updated, you know, and I'm sure this one over here, Miss Social Media Queen, will be on top of all of that. So, you know. I just had to let the people know what was happening. Yeah, I appreciate it. Listen, prayer changes things. 
And yeah. I ain't afraid to ask for it. Nah. If y'all did that because your boy came out the other side. And like I said, um, you know, I definitely, you know, have my moments, you know, feeling, you know, not as strong as I did a few weeks back. But, you know, every day goes by, I get a little better, um, feel a little stronger. So, you know, we'll be we'll be back on the ball here soon, man. But, um, yeah, man, thank you all so, so much. Um, what else we got going on? Oh, you got um, you got your big day coming up next week. Tell yeah. the people what you got going on. Enough about me. So I have my Super Sprint Triathlon on Sunday, the 20th. Yeah. So um, training was a little sporadic in the last few weeks, but been really on it since Michael's been home um, and trying to make sure that I'm ready. <laughs> You'll be ready. Um, so it is a 800 meter swim. So that's, um, eight laps. It's yeah, it's, it's yeah. Eight laps. And so it's, what is that? Is that 200 meters? Whatever. It's eight laps in the pool. It is seven mile bike ride and a two mile run. So yeah. So back in April, if y'all, y'all remember, I did a duathlon. So it was a run bike run. So I have not done the swim portion yet um, in a race, but that will be Sunday. Get out there and get in the pool. I went out and checked out the bike course and the run course today. Lord. <laughs> um, so biking is not my strong suit, but I can get out there and be on it. Well, neither was swimming. Yeah. That swimming good. has actually, I've actually taken pretty well to swimming. I didn't know how to freestyle swim two and a half months ago. Um, got a coach and now I'm swimming my baseline hundred meters. Four laps is two minutes and 49 seconds. So I can get through four laps in two minutes, less than three, which was my goal. Um, so yeah, so the, the swim portion is 200 meters, which is eight laps. So, um, that's good. Um, the biking is, is interesting. (laughs) I'll make it through. I won't be super fast, but I'll get through it. And then of course running. I love that. So I'll get through the end. So the goal is to finish, um, to honor my dad that day. It happens to be father's Mm -hmm. day and it happens to also be the six month anniversary of his passing. So that's why I'm out there and can't wait to, to get it done. Um, you're going to kill it boss. You're going to kill it. And then we're continuing to prepare because we will be doing this fitness competition in November. I am claiming it. Yeah. So like I said, I just got to restructure my workout routine. I lost, I went into the hospital at two twenty eight. I came out of that joint at two thirteen, which I'm still at two thirteen now. Um, I probably was never this small, probably since junior high school. <laughs> um, so I definitely lost in those few weeks, lost some of my muscle definition. So I got to kind of work back on that. Um, yeah, it's just restructuring everything, getting a whole new workout plan. Um, you guys know to follow me. I have been doing a CT Fletcher training program, so I'm still going to do that. Just going to have to reduce the weight. And that's just what it's going to be going forward. Um, like I said, that's going to be tough to do, but thinking about it, you know, ain't no heavy weight worth blowing another vessel and Mm -hmm. killing my damn self. So I will just restructure that plan and keep it moving and see where that gets me. Um, but yeah, come November, we will be doing the WBFF transformation category competition. And, uh, yeah, we going to rock that shit too. (laughs) You can best believe that. Um, and, and, and fun fact, he's pretty good at the whole like posing thing, which I was so shocked when we actually did the workshop, you know, they were, they had us, um, on cam- like I had to video him, he had to video me, and the experts were watching and critiquing, and he's really good. I would flex for y'all right now, but I ain't got no muscles no more. He so got muscles. He just I ain't got no muscles. They I didn't lost them all. <sighs> but anyway, I'm gonna be ready. So we're gonna knock that shit out the park. Um, anything else we got coming up, boss? No, Nothing. That's it. That look, listen, we've had enough. I 
need to sit down. I need a break. I've had enough. I mean, I'm going to do some, a couple of races this summer. Um, this is just my big one. Cause it's the first time I've ever done three sports at, at once. Um, so that's a big deal for me. Um, but I'm going to do another swim, um, a swim bike in August. I'm going to do some more races through the year. Um, but yeah, we just going to chill because Lord knows we need to chill. Yep. So like I said, I'm just resting this week. Um, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program on some, uh, other foolishness, uh, Mm -hmm. on the next episode of something to comment, but this one just wanted to give you guys an update on how I was doing. Um, and the wonderful vacation that we took, but we'll be back on the bullshit (laughs) next weekend. I'm pretty damn sure of it. Uh, it's a lot of shit going down. A lot of interesting shit. You know, I wish we would have had time. I definitely want to get your perspective on this whole bonnet debate and all that bullshit going on. But maybe we'll touch on that next week. And, yeah. Or whatever other uh, uh, fuckery comes our way. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> and I'm 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 at home more with him, so we could we could maybe do a let's let's think about doing a bonus show this week at some point, and we can talk about. Yeah, we'll talk about that. The bonnet issue. Bonnet mm-hmm. gate. As if there ain't other shit in the world to worry about. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah anywho. <laughs> but we've done our hour. We appreciate y'all for checking us out and rolling with us. Um, Like I said, again, let me thank all you guys for the prayers, the support, the well wishes, all of that stuff. Your boy is holding tight. I ain't going nowhere yet. This shit ain't killed Better me. Better not. So I- <laughs> I'm not the one. So your boy is still here going strong, and I want to thank you guys again for all of that. And, uh, yeah, give them all our, our socials. Medias. We're everywhere. Something in common on Instagram, something in common on Facebook. You can follow um, Michael Wright on Facebook. You can follow Kim Nicole on Facebook and Instagram. We're everywhere. Check us out. For those of you who are listening to the audio version, you can check out the video version of this on our YouTube page. It's something in common. Go over there and check us out, and you get to see these Beautiful faces. Beauty and the beast. (laughs) And I'm the beauty. (laughs) On that note, we will see y'all next week. Thank you for joining us. Holla. Wow.